I'm feeling experimental. I'm scared I've done it horribly wrong. I'm doing this at my own risk. And that is the challenge today. And I did go through a little bit of a rough patch. Look how pretty is that? I wish you could smell this. It smells absolutely amazing. I'm really nervous. Got all my bits in this bag. We'll see. <laughs> We're trying this out together right now. Oh, there's a paintbrush mark on that beam. Like, I like a lot of tahini. I am going to just go for it. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> it's Sunday. I am sitting in the Home Bargains car park. It's pouring with rain. You may be able to hear that. Um, I've just been to the gym. Uh, Alex is still not here this weekend, so I'm trying to occupy myself because usually we would go and like walk Roxy or do things together. And it's kind of fun. Like it's weird when you're on your own, when you're so used to always being around someone else. It's actually kind of fun. Like I miss him and love him, but we spend every waking minute together. So it's kind of like a, a fun little day I've planned for myself. Uh, the last video, um, I was thinking about the beams in the kitchen last night and my family came over yesterday and they all agreed that the beams on the kitchen end could do with lightening because then they'll match and they'll all look kind of that lovely sort of pale wood colour. And I think what's happened at that end, I mean, it could also just be that it's pine and that's the colour of pine. But also I think that with soft wood like that, it does absorb stains. So there was some kind of stain varnish on there. So even though I've sanded it, it still has absorbed some of that colour. And that's why it's so orange still. It's not so orange, it's a little bit yellow. So I've come to Home Bargains because I Googled how to lighten wood. And I think I need some bleach, some vinegar and a paintbrush. And basically the gist of it is that because I've sanded them back, got rid of all the varnish on them, I need to just use some bleach very carefully with a paintbrush, leave that to dry, and then um, it, it will kind of make the, the grain in the wood come up a bit. So then you need to sand it back gently. So I've got some gentle sandpaper that I can do that. So I have to sand all the beams again, but I do think it will be worth it. And I think it will mean that that end of the kitchen it will look a really lovely light wood and I will just I know that I will appreciate doing it part of me was a bit like oh can I be bothered and then I thought no but I can because it will match the um stools and it will match a lot of the other things that I have that, are that kind of wood color so I think it's worth it especially if we're going to do the floor and sand the floor back too uh it will make it will just mean that everything looks that lovely pale sort of and I want it to look like antique pine or like antique oak I'm, I keep on saying it's pine. I'm pretty sure it's pine, yeah, because of all the grains. Uh, so let's go in and hopefully they have um, bleach. Apparently you just use like laundry bleach and it's not something I ever buy because I know that it's obviously not good for the environment, but I can't see any other way of lightening wood other than using bleach. So I think it's my only option. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. L leave comments down below because if anyone else wants to try this and there's another way of doing it, say in the comments below but as far as I'm aware this is the only way to do it so I'm going to run in try and not get too wet and that is the challenge today that is the um the task today and I'm actually really looking forward to this little DIY task because it's pouring with rain I was going to do some gardening but I literally can't so it's going to be an inside one for me got the goods everything I need in and out perfect <laughs> perfect literally got everything I needed in five seconds so they had bleach vinegar i got like four um bottles of vinegar and then i got a pack of paintbrushes because i know we have some but i have no idea where they are and i know that they'll come in handy either way uh, i think they're buried in a big box in the garage and when it's raining like this the garage leaks like crazy and i just feel like in there it's going to be really wet so um, i got a packet of paintbrushes and we can use them but that was so cheap so very happy with that i got a mark from my up for my mask i have no idea i'm gonna go home now and see roxy and um probably wipe down all the beams first and i'll show you how i do it so that if any of you are looking to do this you can have a go to <laughs> cup of tea has been made and the loot has been got got all my bits in this bag got my big set of paint brushes got my vinegar Got my bleach, weird buying bleach. I haven't bought bleach in ever. <laughs> I don't think I've ever bought bleach before. I'm gonna rewatch the video so I make sure I know what I'm doing. But I think as far as I can gather, first I've sanded them already. That's good, that job's been done. 
Next, I need to go wipe them all down with a cloth. I think in the video she was like, I'll wait a whole day for the wood to dry. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna wipe it down with a very, very, very slightly wet cloth so it's just damp and I'm sure it'll be dry enough. And I'm gonna then paint on the bleach. I think you need to put it in like a little plastic container because it will, um, if you use like metal or anything, that, that will eat away at the metal. So I'm gonna use some, a little plastic, you know, container, like a takeaway container or something. And then you have to be very careful. So I'll put down stuff on the floor um, and make sure I'm wearing all the protective gear so that if there are any drips, then there's not gonna be any damage. Obviously I will, I'll open all the windows. Um, I'm gonna put Roxy in a room upstairs so that she can't be anywhere near this because obviously I have the pets to think about because I know the bleach will be kind of a strong smell. Though it is just laundry bleach, but um, I know the amount I'm using, I definitely need to have a lot of ventilation. I'm gonna bring the fan in here as well. And then I think you leave the bleach on and you basically can watch to see the color that you would like and then you use vinegar to deactivate the bleach. So. I'm gonna do a test patch to begin with because I don't want to lighten the wood to the point where it's like really, really white or anything. Not that I think that that happens. I think that realistically, I'll probably do it once and think, oh, it could go a bit lighter because I know that my mum used to bleach the table that we have just to clean it and that isn't white or anything. Like it's still wood. Uh, and this is just, like I said, it's just bleach you buy in the shop. So. I think it will be fine, but I'm gonna do a little test patch just to make sure. Uh, and then, yeah, you use the vinegar and then um, you wipe that on. And then I think that's about it really. And then once it's dry, so I'll do all the bleaching today. And then depending on how long it takes to dry, then you sand it down with a really sort of fine sandpaper because I think that it, the bleach uh, raises some of the grain so it will have a texture to it. So you need to then sand it down again. Like I mentioned, I've got some really fine sandpaper. So we're gonna give it a go. I'm gonna see how it turns out. First thing though, there are a few screws left in the wood and a few patches which I wasn't able to sand because of that. So I need to go find the screwdriver or something to remove them with and yeah, get going. I'm kind of nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous, but I am. I need to remove these lights. There's lights here and it meant I couldn't really um, sand around them i'm going to replace these probably with something about the same size so it shouldn't matter too much but i know that they're just going to get in the way so i'm just going to try and take them off we'll see <laughs> we're trying this out together right now I've wiped all the beams, as you just saw me do, just with some water, and they already look like you can see the difference here to here, they already look like they're dry. So uh, I'm gonna have lunch, and then I'm gonna come back and start the bleaching process. Please disclaimer, do not copy what I'm doing from this video. This is not official advice. I'm doing this at my own risk. Usually when it comes to this kind of thing, you would do it outside. Obviously it's not possible for me to do that. Just be careful because <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an adult making this decision to do this myself. I'm gonna wear a mask and goggles and protective clothing and all of that. Um, so yeah, just be careful, please, if you do this. <laughs> Before I do anything, I'm gonna do a test patch. And I think I'm gonna do it up here because there's actually an area which is really hidden. Um, and we might box it in. I don't know, I couldn't really get in there with the sand. I had to kind of hand sand it a little bit so i think if i do the test patch there for some reason it looks awful then it's hidden away kind of um 
and then I'll wait until it lightens. I'm gonna take the bleach. I feel very weird doing this with bleach. Ooh. Pouring it in a little hummus container. Oh, it's quite thick. I've got a paintbrush. I'm just gonna go up there and just paint a little section. I did it. The only thing is it was very bubbly. I'll leave the video that I watched up here and down below. But it was very bubbly. Hers was just like, looked really like lovely. Maybe they had too much on the paintbrush. And I'm like, is it right just to use literally like laundry bleach? Like, is it gonna do anything? Am I like hyping this up to be something and it's actually not gonna do anything? Only time will tell. <laughs> it's been about half an hour and that patch of wood is not changing. I think it's probably gonna take hours before it dries. I don't have hours. I have my Sunday and I'm back to work tomorrow. So <laughs> I am going to just go for it. I'm just going to do this beam. Who cares about the test patch? My instinct is it's not gonna lighten as much as I want it to. I think that um, I'm just not convinced. We'll see. I don't know that it's gonna lighten that much. I don't think I need to be careful, worried about it lightening too much because we'll see. I'm gonna do the beams and I think you leave it to dry for about three to four hours. So it is two o'clock now. I'll do the beams and then around dinner time, I will wipe them down with, it's like half vinegar, half water. With a rag, you wipe them down so that the bleach isn't active anymore. I'm feeling experimental. I'm gonna properly cover myself. Roxy is gonna go out of this room because she's just followed me in here. I've got the gloves. I'm gonna use my respirator mask. Um, I'm gonna put goggles on. I'm gonna put stuff down on the floor. I'm gonna change my clothes. So we're doing it all safe. I'm gonna get the fan in here so that we can ventilate the room. Sadly, this window doesn't open, physically doesn't open. So I'm gonna have that window wide open and we're gonna get going. <laughs> Scared I've done it horribly wrong. <laughs> in the video, she talked about having like clear continual strokes, which in theory makes sense because it's like, okay, I'm gonna continue this stroke. But obviously when you're doing beams and you're having to get down and then move over and then get back up again, it's like you can't do a continuous stroke. So you can see with the bleach as you paint, like where the bleach stops with the paintbrush and then you have to kind of go over it. And she, she mentioned it also, like to not go over the bit you've already done. And I ended up just doing that because I was like, this is not gonna look even. And now I'm looking at it, like I can see patches where it's like looking different. I'm hoping that that's just because it's wet still. And she was just saying that as like advice to make it, make sure it's like even. When in reality, it's very weak bleach, so it will be fine. It's just, I'm looking now and it's, I can see the paint strokes and there's like bits that are bleached and bits that aren't. So I'm just, I'm worried. I'm not gonna lie, I'm worried that it's gonna look really patchy and go back to what it looked like before. <laughs> you see what I mean? You can see like where the brush stopped here and I had to continue here and then certain bits are dry, certain bits are wet. It was just like, it's like painting invisible paint. Like it's impossible. How do you do that? I'm just concerned there's certain bits that are going to be patchy because they're going to have more bleach on them than the other bits. Like you see up here, but look how patchy that is. What I want is for all of it to turn out like that. All of it. Maybe that, maybe it will. Maybe it will. I'm really nervous. Mostly because I'm by myself. And if I do this wrong, it's on me. Come back downstairs and switch this fan off after consulting with my mum, because I inherited this table, you know, the table, the farmhouse table here from my mum. This is the table that I grew up with. It's my childhood table, which is kind of nice. 
and she used to bleach this to clean it so she would scrub it with bleach on the top you can see the difference in color of the top to the legs the legs are completely destroyed by our cats over the years but you see how it's kind of like a darker wood and the top is obviously a lot lighter i could do with giving it a good old scrub and a good old clean again that's something that i quite like to do um in the process of doing the kitchen give it a nice old scrub down she used to do this with a scrubby brush and diluted bleach and i think the issue with doing the beans with the paintbrush is because they're above me it's not a piece of furniture that i'm outside with i can do very carefully that's the issue so i'm going to dilute the bleach i think half and half or two thirds two thirds water one third bleach and use a sponge instead or like a cloth because I can rub that into the um, wood and I think that that will end up being more even and with another coat I think that it will lighten it some more because I think it's pretty much dry now but there are some marks which I'll show you which is not ideal the worst one is here you can see it's um left drip so that happened immediately and then I was like oh shit because it started to drip so that's not great and then over here you can see the paint strokes it was just very very hard to to work with this side's again you can kind of see that the part that i did the test on in there can you see it's very dark that looks very bright because i did two layers we're going to give it another go all part of the experimenting i'm going to use a cloth of some kind maybe um literally something like this use a cloth to rub it all on and i think that should work better hoping <laughs> and if all worse comes to worse i can use a wax or a varnish to even it all out again we'll see That was 10 times easier. I really wish I'd done that from the start. And this is the thing that when you watch videos online, it kind of derails your original plan because I had spoken to my mum about the table and I had originally thought, I will use a sponge and I will dilute the bleach and I will rub it on. And then I watched that video and I was like, okay, no, she knows what she's doing. I'm sure that that method works perfectly on furniture, but I should have gone with my instinct because I sometimes doubt myself and I've like, I've done lots of DIY in my life and just, I don't know, I should have just followed my instinct because I think that that way was just so much more even. But we'll see if it dries. I can still see the paint marks. I can still see the drips. I'm very frustrated about it because I'm a massive, massive perfectionist. But I'm gonna walk Roxy because it's slightly not pouring with rain right now. It's just like raining, but not torrential and come back and see if it's dried it might need another coat and then i think i'll just have to sand it and hope for the best i've had my dinner i didn't film it because it was literally a jacket potato and that's not very interesting is it the animals are meowing at me even though i fed them which i can't understand are you still hungry do you want some more food what do you want from me zeus he's like yes i would like more food roxy is sulking not sure why, maybe because Alex isn't here. Every time I get up, she's like, is that Alex? Oh my gosh, the light over here is so funny. I've got this like glowing bulb. Let's turn that light off. That definitely shouldn't be on. There we go. I am gonna leave the bleaching until tomorrow. It has got to the point where I don't know that those me going over it with a cloth did very much at all. I've tried going over the bits that were particularly bad with the paintbrush, again, like the dripping part, but I think I just should wait till the morning and let the bleach do its thing. <laughs> and I was gonna put the vinegar on it, on it tonight and I just, nah. I don't think anyone's ever gonna look up and be like, ooh, there's a paintbrush mark on that beam. Like literally no one's gonna care and no one's gonna notice. I'm gonna clean up now though, because I have to use this kitchen at some point and there's dust sheets everywhere and the dust sheets i can just put them back on when i need to so it's massive cleanup operation now 
Look at this dog. I threw those dog, hello, look at this cat. I threw those um, dog beds there because um, of everything being everywhere in, in the kitchen and stuff being, you know, and she's just lying on this mountain of dog beds. Is that comfy, Roxy? Is it comfy? Are you cozy? Have you got curly hair from the rain? Frankie's coming to say hello as well. Hi. Hi. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to do this floor. Look at it. That is essentially what they used to be. Can you imagine when the floor's done? How great it's going to be. And when the fireplace is done. And when we've got cupboards. Yeah, it's going to be great. And the walls are painted. Hey Zeus. <laughs> It's actually quarter past 12, so it's technically the afternoon. I'm cuddling Roxy because she won't stop barking at the gardeners. They're here today to do the fence at the bottom. I might ask if I can sneakily get a time lapse, but I'm also really embarrassed to do that. But they do know my job as YouTube, so maybe they'll be fine with it. They are basically doing the fence down the bottom. They're doing like a picket fence because right now, well, they've removed the old one because it was completely ruined and falling apart and Roxy could sneak through it. And we're gonna get a really nice proper fence down there so that it will be really substantial and stand the test of time. And I'm looking forward to it so we can let her off and not worry about her at all, which will be wonderful. She's falling asleep in my lap. My hair is wet, but also this is gel. Um, I'm really sniffy today and I'm wondering if it's, Either that I've suddenly got hay fever, which I don't think I have, um, or it's all the dust that's just stuck up my nose from yesterday, because even though I had that mask on, it still gets like in your face. You can't help it. The beams today do look good, though there definitely are drip marks, which I'm just very annoyed about. Next week, I think, is when the carpenter's coming. Um, I would love to start painting before he gets here, but that might not happen, we'll see. Uh, it just all takes so long, but I'm actually, I way prefer doing renovations where it takes forever and you do it really slowly and carefully, and then you get the result you want and you save money because I could have paid someone to do those beams and I did consider it and I just thought, why? Like, if I'm able to do it, then I do it myself because it just, it saves money, it doesn't save time and sometimes sometimes spending money actually is better off because then you can actually do your work but in a lot of instances like sanding and painting it's just so much more worthwhile that alex and i do it ourselves because yeah it, and it's also really fun i really enjoy it i am sitting in my office with my new computer which has been a huge success for editing videos i'm absolutely loving it look i stopped for a second and she's grabbing me like excuse me why are you stopping stroking me yeah i'm loving this computer Loving the new layout in the office. It's just lovely. My sister's just gone to go get lunch. If you didn't know, my sister works with me. Um, but I'm gonna go get lunch now. Roxy's had enough of me. I'm gonna go get lunch now. And I'm gonna use some of the vegetables that I have. My friend, um, he has started a company uh, selling veg boxes. Lockdown basically encouraged him to start a passion project where he started to grow his own veg and he's been doing it no dig. And he's local, so I will leave a link to him below if you are looking for a local um, Cornish 
veg box because he's brand new and he will literally deliver it to your door. And if you go to his Instagram, he's growing it all himself. It's called Herland Roots and his name's Mark, so go check him out. And make an order if you're someone who's looking for a properly local Cornish uh, veg box. There's some really, really unique veg, so I'll show you the meals that I'm gonna make with some of the veg that he sent me. I did share it on my story. I'll, did I get a picture? I'll put a picture of what it looked like in the box, but I've put it all away in the fridge now. But there's some really lovely kale and also some broccoli that I really fancy for lunch. So I'll cook that and show you what I have. Um, but I just thought it was really, really special because the vegetables in the box were really unique. So they've got red Russian kale and then there's some patty pan squash and some red spring onion, which I've never seen before. Uh, the broccoli is like miniature and so are the courgettes, which are really, really cute. And then there was some salad and yeah, I'm just really impressed by how much he's managed to achieve in a year. And he really, really cares about the environment, really cares about veg. And I just wanted to give him a shout out because I know lots of you who follow me are from Cornwall and you live in West Cornwall. So if you want a veg box, highly, highly recommend. Um, and it's truly, truly, truly local. But I'm going to stop chab chatting and gibbering on and I'm gonna go and make myself some food because my tummy is rumbling. I'm not really sure why because my tummy doesn't rumble because I never let it get to that point but it is so it's clearly telling me go and eat something Maddie. <laughs> Here is some of the veg. So we've got rainbow chard which is so whoop, which is so pretty. Um, I'm just gonna chop all of this and fry it with some garlic um, and I'm also gonna fry up the red spring onion. Look how pretty is that? So I'm gonna do the red spring onion with some garlic and then I'll throw in these mushrooms which are not from the veg box but I picked these up I think from Sainsbury's and they need to be eaten with probably, I might put some chickpeas or black beans. Yeah, I think I'll put some, some black beans in there as well for some protein and that'll be a really, really yummy simple lunch. So I'm gonna make that now, I'm so, so hungry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's make a yummy yummy lunch with all these amazing vegetables. So first of all, I'm gonna use the spring onion as the base and I'm gonna chop this really nice and finely. I just love the colors of this. It's so different to a normal spring onion and I did make quite a lot of this. And next I'm gonna quarter the mushrooms. I've spoken about this before, but I really like to cut mushrooms like this. I find they taste better. They absorb a lot more flavor. So give it a go if you're used to slicing them. And if you don't like mushrooms, then swap it out for whatever vegetable you do enjoy. That's the beauty of it. I'm gonna add the spring onion to a pan with some olive oil and just fry it until it softens. Making sure to give it a stir as and when it needs it. And you guessed it, of course, I'm adding in garlic. I don't think I can ever cook anything without adding garlic. It's obviously just one of the best flavors and it makes everything taste better. I'm gonna add in my mushrooms and leave them be. I just stir them through and add a few flavorings. So I'm gonna season with salt and pepper, of course, and a generous amount of pepper, especially because it just is my favorite thing. And then also add some light soy sauce for flavor and some dark soy sauce for the color. And stir and mix this in and just let the mushrooms cook on their own. You don't want to disturb them too much. This really helps them get all juicy and yummy until they reduce down. Next, I'm adding in the chopped chard, a tin of black beans, stirring it all through and just cooking it until it's all simmered and ready to eat. While I was cooking, I realized I didn't have any like rice with it or anything. So I did have this packet of Whitworth's Protein by Nature Moroccan grains in the cupboard. I really, really wish that I had some like quinoa readily cooked or some rice. And that's something I want to get into at the weekends more. Pre-cooking and uh, meal prepping. So let me know if you want me to do a video on that because it's something I want to get into. So if I did a video, maybe it would motivate me like meal prepping for the week because Obviously this weekend I don't have time, it's been busy because of renovating, but I would love to make the time. Like if I'm cooking dinner, just even if it's literally just putting a sweet potato in the oven or just cooking up a batch of quinoa, that's good enough. Because every day for lunch, I'm like, I really want to make some lovely vegetables with beans. And then I don't have any grains to go with it. So it'd be a really worthwhile exercise to practice every week. 
I wish you could smell this. It smells absolutely amazing. And I'm just gonna have, I don't know, maybe like a third of this or half of this. And then I think I will top it with some tahini because I think that will go really well. That literally took me about 15 minutes. So it's super easy lunch. And I'll go get the tahini. Of course, I'm using the liquid gold tahini as always. Give it a good old drizzle. I like a lot of tahini. And then also I'm gonna finish it off with some kimchi. I really like this brand. This is the Vadasi, and I think you get this in Sainsbury's. Um, and I really, really like it. It's probably one of the better sort of supermarket kimchis that I've tried. I may as well just finish this off. <laughs> I really wanna make my own kimchi. That's another thing. I'd love to make my own kimchi. I remember watching Cheap, La Cheap Lazy Vegans video on her making her own kimchi and it looked so so good and i would love to be able to do that because kimchi is one of my favorite foods and it is so good for you so it's a good thing it's one of my favorites because it's so good for your gut anything fermented is just incredible so here it is it's a little impromptu lunch <laughs> recipe for you that's better lighting there you go so i've got my moroccan grains which i would rather be quinoa to be honest and then all of the yummy rainbow chard, mushroom, black beans, garlic, spring onion, and then kimchi and topped with some tahini. Let's actually give this a try. I'm really wanting to try this rainbow chard. I actually didn't end up putting the kale in it because I just thought it was overkill. I'll have the kale for dinner. Mm. If you're in Cornwall, Herland Roots down below, go check them out, make an order. Send them an email if you're interested. Yum. Just got back from walking Roxy. How many times am I gonna film myself walking down the garden and her following? <laughs> I'm gonna show you what they've done today because they've made a lot of progress. And I think tomorrow we should have a fence. As you can see, they've put the frame up, which looks great. It's not gonna be this tall. They've drawn a line here. This will be how tall the fence will be. I think they just, these were the only sized posts that they could order. So they ordered six foot posts, but they gave them eight foot posts for the price of six foot posts. And they've got this far, and they've put the post creep down inside so it's all firmly in there. And then it will go around the corner over there behind this big guy. And the digger is coming tomorrow. How did you get through? Roxy, how did you get through? Stay. Stay there. The bamboo they're going to get rid of with a digger tomorrow because it would take a lot of man hours to remove because the roots are strong. Roxy, stay. They're going to smooth all of this because this is like a compost heap, I think, originally. The only plant we're going to keep is this one because I love it. And the fence is going to go all the way up to here so we can remove all of my lovely green stuff from there because it just doesn't look very nice that's the gap that she tries to run through that's the gap that she's chewed and so we'll have a nice picket fence running all the way around up to here so you can't escape let's go back inside shall we very happy with the progress that they've made today and hopefully it'll be all the way there tomorrow if not the next day should be wonderful. I came inside thinking that I was gonna have to make dinner and it's really late and I'm super hungry. Then I realized we have leftover pasta from the other day. The pasta with meat sauce <laughs> that Alex made. I'm over the moon. So I'm gonna eat this and then I'll tell you a little story about something that happened today that was very annoying about renovations. But fingers crossed we'll be resolved tomorrow. <sighs> I am so very tired. It's eight o'clock and it's the first night of Love Island tonight and I'm debating whether I should stay up to watch it. If you're a Love Island watcher and you are also approaching 30 years old, is it even doable watching it like every night? I used to think Love Island was a really great way to go to bed early because it stopped me from going out or... Um, Staying up too late because I'd be like, oh, I'll just stay in. Let's not do much tonight because Love Island's on. We can watch Love Island together and chill out and relax and then go to bed. 
The fact that that used to be a thing and now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, how am I gonna stay up till 10 p.m. or half 10 if it's like an hour and a half long because lots of the episodes and I know that last tonight, sorry, will be an hour and a half. Like I can't do that and also wake up at half five in the morning and go to the gym and then feed the animals and then make sure the house is tidy and then get started for work at 9 a.m. And I don't even have children. Like if I had kids, how? How? So I think this year I've already decided that I'm going to watch Love Island the day after. I think tonight I'll be so tempted to watch it because it's just been so long and I love it so much. So I think I'm going to end up watching it, but I'm also more tired than I've ever been. <laughs> I feel so tired. I don't get headaches and I have such a bad headache or I did before I had food. I've now got like a residual one because I'm just so tired because I've been getting up really early for the gym, which is great. But also over the weekend, because I was doing the beams for so long, it just exhausted me. And last night, because I was doing the beams until quite late and then I tidied, I didn't really get to sleep until like 11 so I'm just, I'm just like dozing here right now and I'm just trying to summon the energy to go to bed. I'm like closing my eyes talking to you, that's how tired I am. The story that I was going to tell you earlier is that we got an email from the company that we booked back in March when we first moved in. The first thing we did was we called up a window company to come round to book to restore our windows because most of the windows don't open. Lots of them are rotting and there was mould around a lot of the windows. So we knew it was important to get it done in the summer or as soon as possible so that we wouldn't have a damp issue in the house and also so that we could open the windows in the summer so that we can um, keep them ajar in the winter to stop damp from forming, etc, etc. It was a very practical, important thing to get done. They emailed today basically saying that one of their staff members is sick and so therefore they can they're cancelling our booking which is in 3 weeks time and their next available slot is january or february obviously i i rang her did i email her back first no i think i rang her and i obviously i feel awful for the the staff member who's sick and i said i really hope you know they're okay and um you know i really sympathize and send my well wishes um, but I, I was asking about why we were being delayed so long and she didn't really tell me, couldn't really explain, um, apart from that they've got lots of jobs and that's just what's happened because of the situation. But Alex and I were obviously quite frustrated because um, of the fact that we booked it in March, so that's March, April, May, June, July, four months ago, and we booked them rather than any other company um with the hope it would get done this summer so if it's if the booking is in three weeks time we couldn't understand why we're being pushed back to january or february and it should be more of like a first come first serve like they still have other staff members to complete the work so we should still come first even if it's delayed a little bit because it's not like all of their staff members are sick or um that they can't do it so it didn't make sense basically it didn't add up to us that was a bit of a shame i mean i was very frustrated because I was like oh my gosh we booked that so long ago what we're going to do about the windows in the winter it's going to be really cold and we're going to get damp but luckily I rang another um sash window restoring company carpenters in Cornwall near us and they are coming around tomorrow to save the day and he said he does have availability in August which I was so shocked by and I'm like really kicking myself because back when we booked the first window company, I like did my research, I found them I, and I was like, these are like the only ones who are down here that are local to us. And um, I think other ones I found were maybe based in Devon. And Alex was like, are you sure? Are you sure they're not other companies? I was like, I couldn't really see any or maybe I contacted one and they said that they weren't available. Or I don't really remember, but I just, I was like, oh no, it's fine. Let's just go with them. And then what do I do? I go and look online today and I find another one that's actually closer to us and um, has availability much sooner. And had I rang them in March, maybe they would have had availability back in the spring. So Alex was right, because at the time I remember him saying, oh, do you want to find another company to you know, reach out to to see if there's any um, sooner availability or get a different quote kind of thing? And I was like, no, 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 I've, I've done my research. I clearly was just very stressed at the time and... I guess in a bit of a rushed headspace 
and didn't think through it properly. So this is the lesson to myself and to you who, anyone watching, make sure that you always speak to multiple um, people or companies or businesses and get quotes and get different availabilities so that this sort of situation doesn't happen because we could have had another company to speak to easily and it would have just probably put things in perspective better and I'm regretting that choice but you learn you only you only learn from it when you make these mistakes and with all other stuff we've done so far at the house we have spoken to multiple people to make sure we're getting the right quote we're getting the right person the right fit the right availability and the right option but that was just one that I just overlooked and I think it's probably because like I said I was rushing and rushing never works and I think it's kind of like fate I like to think of these things as fate that um, this didn't work and we go with someone else um, for other reasons that I'm not going to go into because this is a public forum and I don't want to say anything online that could cause any problems for anybody um, but I think that this was meant to be and I'm hoping that the uh, people tomorrow are amazing and can fit us in and actually maybe it was meant to be because we are doing lots of things in the kitchen in July, so we're getting our worktops done, the electricians are changing stuff in there, all the sockets, the plumber's doing the radiator, the carpenter's doing all the cupboards, we're gonna be painting, we're gonna be doing the floors. So July will be heavy in the kitchen and there'll be lots to do, so maybe it's just a blessing and it's meant to be that we get it done in August by somebody else when the kitchen's finished or mostly finished because the worktops are being done in August, not July. I'm tired. Um, but yeah, lots of stuff is happening in July, so maybe we, maybe we end up being better. But I'm gonna finish this video here. I did think that I was gonna vlog tomorrow, the fence, but I think this video is already long enough and I'm very tired. And I think tomorrow I need to focus on getting some sleep and also finishing off lots of important work. Cause I've got lots of important work that I need to finish off and I think that should be the priority because I think if I try and vlog I will just neglect the vlog. So I hope that you have enjoyed today's video as usual and my experience with the beams and I will finish them probably when Alex gets home and I think he can help me. Maybe we'll do that on Thursday or something and that'll be the next video and we'll finish them and we'll varnish them or wax them and maybe, maybe we'll start on the preparation on the walls maybe because I often say oh let's we're gonna do this 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 and this and I do like one of the things because I'm really optimistic I'm really enjoying vlogging a lot more I hope you're enjoying being you know a part of my life a bit more because I feel like I closed myself off for a while and I was there's a lot going on in my life so I was just it was too much and I'll probably open up to you about that maybe down the line because I am feeling a lot better now and I did go through a little bit of a rough patch, but I am really enjoying doing these vlogs and bringing you along for the, the ride with the renovations and everything. And I'm gonna go to sleep now because look at my eyes, I'm like barely opening them. I want to be doing exactly what this puppy is doing, snoozing. So I'm gonna go do that. Good night. <laughs>